In a country like the United States, where one of the leading causes of death is properly prescribed medications, the fact that there are 200 years of recorded safe use of homeopathic medicine, as in zero harm, is incredibly meaningful. I invited an old friend of mine on the show, Ellie Whalen. Welcome to the Flower Lounge, a place for conversations with wildly creative people and a little plant-loving wisdom to help you experience life in full bloom. I'm Katie Hess, flower alchemist and founder of Lotus Way, and I believe in a world where we're all living at our personal edge. Who founded a company called Sprayology. I met Ellie many years ago when we did a series of collaborative events with Way of Chocolate along the East Coast and in Arizona. We would talk about all things vibrational remedies and wellness, and it was so fun to work with another business owner who wanted to collaborate, and our strengths really complemented each other. In this episode, Ellie and I reconnect, and we talk about her experience running a business with homeopathy. We talk about which remedies folks are most drawn to, how her business and people's needs have shifted over the years, and what it takes to grow a healthy business today. So excited to have you with us, Ellie. It's wonderful to be here and to hear your voice and to see you. It's been too long. I know. We used to do all those events together and they were so much fun. So it's been like, I don't know how many years it's been since we circled back around from that time. Yeah, it has. But this will reconnect us and more will come. So if you're out there listening, Ellie and I have worked on a lot of different presentations together. Our businesses fit together like a glove because Ellie works in homeopathy. And it's a, such a perfect, subtle remedy that fits with flower essences. And I've always admired Ellie's business sense. And so we wanted to have a conversation about all things homeopathy, vibrational medicine, and also the challenges of being a woman in business or just being a person in business. And some of the things that happened to you in the past couple of years that I find really fascinating. So maybe should we just, do you want to just do like a quick sort of get folks up to speed of how you started your business? Yeah, that's a great idea. Who we are, what, where we came from. Sprayology has been in business now for over 20 years, which is, you know, yeah. quite impressive. <laughs> We're really proud of that because I consider what we did and when we did it really ahead of its time. You know, we really wanted to take natural medicine and remedies and make them easier to understand, easier to use, part of everyday life. And, you know, going back 20 years ago, it really wasn't mainstream to even think about the fact that stress was a health hazard. So 20 years ago, you know, really weird. uh, Yeah. You know, now stress is part of everyday language you know, stress, anxiety, and and it wasn't 20 years ago. I remember doing consultations with people and sleep wasn't even a topic, like how much you slept wasn't even a topic of conversation. Yeah, it really, we have quite rapidly seen a change in in health and well-being impacted by lifestyle changes and different stresses that we just didn't see 20 years ago. So what was it like for you to be, because I can relate to you on this level, to be sort of like painfully ahead of the curve 20 yeah. years ago. Yeah, it was a challenge at first. I mean, <laughs> some people really got it really quickly, but then they didn't know how to present it in the market and really get the customer aware of it because we were the first product that went in your mouth and sprayed. So now you do see products like Rescue Remedy and things that that have oral sprays and And your product and different, you know, all of these different products, spray is very common. But back then, nobody did a spray. Also, your packaging is sexy. And Mm -hmm. typically, homeopathy is like super medicinal looking. And your packaging has always been like exquisite. We wanted people to have a comfortness with taking care of themselves naturally and simply and preventatively. So that, you know, someone would have have our spray in their purse like a lipstick or you know, something else you might have in your purse. We wanted people to feel comfortable with it. It was funny when we first founded the company, products were in brown bottles with droppers and you had to count the drops. And I found it very inconvenient because, you know, frankly, having to sit there and count, you know, (laughs) I remember being on airplanes and flying around and people would just look at me like I was a little weird or 
or I was sick. You know, those were their conceptions. But when I spray the product now and I'm on an airplane, you know, I do this and people go, what's that? You know, so making something a little more beautiful does help people become more comfortable. You know, it's, we like we like nice things. <laughs> so why not make it pretty? Right. But at the same time, you had to deliver. You had to have products that worked or we wouldn't have survived 20 years. Right. You know, but it, it definitely was a big challenge. We would go and talk to people and, and we would have to use a lot of words to explain what we were then. And people were very skeptical. And, you know, they were not comfortable with the word homeopathy. They were not comfortable with the word sublingual, you know, underneath the tongue. And now, you know, I can just spray it and people go, oh, that's sublingual. That's better. You know, that's better on the body. And I'm like, oh, so less words than, you know, 20 years ago. But we have definitely seen such an ex- rapid growth in, in the wellness field. A lot of really good, um, some really great products. But when you have that kind of rapid business change, you also get a lot of stuff that isn't so good out there, right? And so then it can add to people's skepticism because they've tried things that don't work, right? Mm-hmm. Or, you know they see some of these TV shows where it's just like the, the ingredient of the hour, you know, where everybody's going gaga over it, you know, but we've seen a lot of good too. We're seeing people talk about living a more preventative life and listening to their body. I think that, you know, as a woman, I find, and, and having many sisters and girlfriends, I find women can go you know, very rapidly through their day, have a lot of responsibility, a lot going on. And they know how everyone in their life is feeling. Mm -hmm. You know, they know how their significant other is feeling and their children and their coworkers and their girlfriends. But they, they don't take enough time, many people, to say, how am I feeling? You know, and what is my body telling me? And I really think that if we listen and kind of take stock of what's going on in our body more frequently, we can say, oh, that's different. Why is that happening? What adjustments should I make? And that's really the core of what we, why we created Sprayology. I mean, I had been burning the candle on every end, it was very successful in business with large corporations, and I am... Um, I was depleting my body. I mean, I was 20 years younger. I was in my mid thirties. I'll be 55 on Christmas day. Yay! But I feel healthier than I did when I was 35. I mean, I look older. I have aged 20 years, but I'm comfortable with that. I love who I am in that space. So I have really taught myself to whether it's, oh, am I getting some sore throats frequently or, you know, Am I seeing skin changes or energy changes or pain changes to say, let's take a look. Let's stop and see what's going on. And I think when we do that and we catch things earlier, they don't become such a big deal. For sure. So, yeah. So that was our hope to help people be more preventative. And, you know, there's a lot of things naturally, and it's almost very European in a way. And, and, you know, worldly than the U.S. The U.S. was very not, you know, brought up with homeopathy or natural remedies or natural products like much of the world. I mean, you know, homeopathy is just second to acupuncture in terms of medicine use worldwide. Oh my God. And in India, I remember traveling in India when we would get sick, we would go see the homeopath and they were amazing. Yeah. If you're in France, you know, on the street corner, instead of the big you know, pharmacy here with the drive through it will say homeopathic. It will say it in French, homeopathy, naturopathy, and then it says pharmacy. And, you know, you have doctors, if you go there, they don't want to prescribe harsh medicines that don't work with the balance of the body. I mean, they want to use them as needed. There are a lot of great advances in medicine that help people every day. And I'm not against that. I think, you know, we have to be smart, but can we bring a healthier patient to the doctor when we need the doctor? So that's what I'm about, you know, preventative, daily, gentle self-care. But it has been a big challenge for sure to bring this to market in the U.S. Yeah, and when when we met, you were like uh, mostly operating, like I was at the time, mostly operating in the spa industry. So, Mm -hmm. right, so it wasn't like so much health food stores, but your brand was really like 
is like this elevated, beautiful, I don't know, it's like not what you expect when you see homeopathy. And yeah. it was fitting in really nicely into all these really like upper end hotels and spas, right? Yeah, and it still is. I mean, that still is our primarily primary distribution. The direction of a quality, really well-run spa today needs to have its roots in wellness. And some of them do, and some of them don't, and some claim to and don't. But the ones who really are true about it were a perfect fit. Because when that person comes in for a spa treatment, they're looking to see how they are feeling and how they can help them. And whether that's through, you know, reducing stress and having a massage or, you know, we've seen spas with acupuncture and with other treatments and, you know, your product and my product really can support people. So I think the spa is, it's really going to be interesting to see what happens in the next 10 years, you know, yeah. how they grow and change. Yeah. I mean, the, the short term is like, you know, give me a massage, make me feel better. But we've seen how, I mean, give like huge shout out here to the Pearl Spa in Fulton, Maryland yeah. of an example of a wildly successful day spa that, you know, will treat folks as if it's like a wellness center, right? We would have people coming, people will go there as a resource when they have a headache or when something hurts or when they have wellness issues. And you and I have seen firsthand the success of a business that really cares about the people in their community on like a long-term deep wellness preventative level. Yeah. That when they understand it and, you know, 20 years ago, people got a massage for the fun of it, or, you know, it's a big treat, but now people are going because they need it because their lives have really become very stressful and the stress is impacting their health. And so that's why we are very comfortable in spa. I think there's a lot of really great health food stores out there as well. But, you know, we haven't been as natural a fit in that distribution. We definitely work with some that are, you know, kind of a little more modern or they're, they've seen an increase of a, an additional customer over the years as well. People seeking natural products who didn't normally go into a health food store. So it's kind of all blurring. But the one thing that's consistent People want to feel better. And, you know, there's some disillusionment there. You know, maybe they have kind of vague symptoms where they go to the doctor and say, I'm tired a lot, or, you know, I'm just not feeling myself. But, you know, they run tests and they can't find anything. There was an article in the Wall Street Journal in the health section, and it came out in April, April 30th, I believe. And it talked about how deficient the U.S. person, customer, you know, general population is in vitamin B12, but it took it a step farther and it had a, a design of the, bo the human body. And it talked about all of the kind of vague symptoms people get when their B12 is low. But what happens is it's not something doctors are generally looking for. So it, the article also talked about that, you know, it took a long time to figure you're out that this was it and a big expense. And the fact is the things that deplete the body of alcohol that the U.S. is so good at, stress, medications, alcohol consumption, caffeine consumption, you know, all of these things deplete the body. And really as a first world country, the U.S. is the most deplete of the other countries. And so you know, people are even often misdiagnosed with early dementia and other things when it's just low B12. So, you know, when we founded Sprayology, we're really a homeopathic company, but we have really have a category of supplements as well, that we have two products that have B12 in them, and one that's isolated by itself and one in a multi-formula. And it makes a difference. I mean, we have people who come up and say, I wasn't feeling good and now I am, thank you. You know, besides the natural energy boost you get with B12, really important, you know, for many reasons. So, so if a listener out there, they would know they were low in B12 if they were experiencing fatigue and depletion? Fatigue is definitely something, but some people will have numbness in their extremities. 
Some people have vision issues. You can have heart palpitations, shortness of breath, a lot of things that might be very serious and take people, you know, to the doctor. And definitely there's warning signs you should never avoid. But ringing in the ears can be related to low B12. And it's also the other part of the diet. You know, B12 is definitely going to be more prevalent for people who are uh, vegetarian and vegan because the primary sources are in red meat. So you can get it other ways, but you have to work at it. We're also seeing, I read another article on the supplement side that I just found was so interesting this week. They said that low vitamin D3 levels, when your levels are low and you raise them, you actually, that can be as effective as a flu vaccine. And the reason is- Don't get me started. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, no, I agree with you on that. I don't get a flu vaccine. But what was really interesting, the article kind of went into what came first. Low Is it cold and flus are worse in the winter because of people's D3 is low? Should If the D3 is high, because D3 is very important for different parts of uh, the respiratory system, and these are respiratory illness. So, you know, we actually came out Last year, when we launched our newest formula, and it's called Everyday Sunshine. I and love it is, the name. yeah, isn't that cute? And it's a vegan D3 formula that provides, you know, what most doctors recommend 2000 IUs, which is equivalent to 50 MCGs. So we've been really excited about that because people are like, oh, that, you know, that really can make a measurable dis- difference in how people are feeling. I I visited my father last week in Florida and, you know, he's 86. And I was like, you need to be taking this formula and um, you need to take it in liquid form because it does absorb, you know, more quickly into the body. Well, you think about it, like think about your daily life. How often are you actually in sunshine? Like the, the times that I can think that I'm getting a lot of sunshine is like one week when I'm in Costa Rica leading mm-hmm. a retreat on the beach, right? Because then I'll actually right. get some sun on my skin. Otherwise, it's pretty rare, especially well, and for all, you guys who have winter. Yeah, you know, we've had the clocks went back and the day is shorter. And, you know, some people wake up and drive to work when it's dark and come home and drive home from work when it's dark. But also people are wearing a lot of sunscreen. And, you know, and so that's preventing their body from absorbing the D3 as well. And then the other thing that I, you know, in launching this product research, the darker your skin color naturally, the less you absorb D3. So like a really high risk person for low D3 would be African-American man or woman living in the Midwest in the winter. They would be like super high risk for low D. Mm. And I used to take D all the time. I think I need to buy some of yours. If yeah. remind me, but it's been a while. Remind me of the symptoms. It's like, like deep muscular fatigue. Yeah, you know, it's very good for bone health. So anyone who has calcium absorption issues or concerns in their family, it's designed to help your bone sail stronger. There's also it's very helpful to the immune system. So someone who's getting sick a lot, but it's also connected to your mood. So for people who maybe deal with stress, anxiety issues, maybe, you know, are trying natural ways to deal with even depression or low things like that, their D3 levels could be low as well. Mm -hmm. So it really hits three main parts of our life, right? Our bone, our mood, and, you know, our immunity. So Does it also affect our hormone systems? You know, that's a good question. I'm not 100% sure. I don't feel like I'm, it helps with a lot of things, but, mm-hmm. and they're all kind of connected, right? If you build up your immune system, that can help balance your hormones better. So, you know, I think it's creating an easy way to kind of take care of yourself. Yeah. So you have the critical vitamins that most people are low in. And then yes. what are some of your most popular right now homeopathic formulas? And what, you know, are, they, our, what are they for? Our number one seller is for sleep. You know, it is a sleep deprived country. And it was kind of funny, you and I have talked before that, you know, 20 years ago, like you said, people weren't so worried and focused on having sleep products. I mean, now if you take a group of 10 people, 
the majority in there are going to tell you they don't sleep as well as they, they should. So I really believe sleep is the golden chain that ties your health and body together. So when our sleep's interrupted, we have to either counteract that by taking care of ourselves and working to improve our sleep. So it's not a surprise to me that our sleep product is our number one seller. It's called Sleepies. But our number two best-selling homeopathic does surprise me. It's actually for hair and nail growth. We are seeing more and more women at a younger age who are losing their hair. Whoa. It's thinning. Wow. So yeah, stress, medications, nutrition. These things are making the body not work. And this is an outward sign when your hair, you know, you're, it's, your, it's telling you something, you know, when you're starting to see a lot of shedding or it doesn't grow well. So, you know, but... We treat stress and adrenal exhaustion. Right now, we're seeing a lot of purchasing on the cold and flu product and the immune product to get people through the winter. Our fastest acting formulas are actually for allergies and one for digestion. But the allergies formula can even be sprayed right on the skin. Um, it can be done right on the skin for like a bug bite or a mosquito or even a bee sting, where you can just spray it transdermally and it will start to, to work right away. But you also spray it in your mouth for, you know, um, food allergies, pet allergies, seasonal allergies, things like that. So, okay, let's go back to the basics. And I know we're going to, we're going to accelerate forward and talk a little bit more about your business and like the super challenge that happened to you, which I'm fascinated by. But before we get there, let's like dial it all the way back to the basics. And for the folks who don't understand how homeopathy works, how does right. it work? So homeopathy uses ingredients from nature to trigger your body's own healing. What does that mean? So we use primarily plant mineral, and in some cases, animal ingredient sources. Give a message to your body. And it's easiest to explain through example. It is called like treats like. So if your eyes are watering, I'm going to give you an ingredient that would actually cause that externally. So I would give you the onion because an onion makes your eyes water when you cut it. If you were sensitive to caffeine, I would give you something unroasted coffee bean. Or if you had poison ivy, I would give you poison ivy. So sometimes at first people go, oh, that's weird. But then when I say, look at allopathic medicine or what's primarily still practiced in the US, a flu vaccine, they give you a little bit of the flu. Allergy shots, they're giving you what you're allergic to over time. And there's actually a, a new peanut allergy medicine that is going to be coming out. I, I've read soon. I don't know the details on it, but um, my understanding of what I did read was it, they're giving you basically minuscule amounts of peanut flour to build up your body's ability to handle it. So essentially, so it is homeopathy, but it's bound with probably heavy metals and chemicals and other stuff that will trigger other responses in the body that we probably don't want, right? Yeah, yeah. So how is homeopathy different? Your homeopathy. Um, you know, it's different because it's so gentle. So even if someone is taking a lot of medicines because they have something going on, allopathic medicine, um, you can take homeopathy. There's no side effects. There's no contraindications. It's also different because it's the only of the, it's the only branch of natural medicine that's currently regulated by the FDA. And that goes back to the foundation of the FDA because the first head of the FDA was a homeopathic physician. Oh, so, yeah, and, and so they wanted to give the credibility to each other. Um, it also is because there's 200 years of history of these products being used safely that allows us to know what ingredients work, how they work. And because we've been regulated, that has brought um, a lot of good and also a lot of challenges. <laughs> Wait, when you say it's been regulated for 200 years, do you no. mean... By the FDA. I'm sorry, it FDA. hasn't been regulated by for 200 years. It's been regulated since the foundation of the FDA, and I don't know the year off the top. But, but homeopathy it has, has been, been around, around for, for yes, many, many, many. Yes. many years. It, is, it is believed that the first homeopaths created the first vaccinations, basically taking from a little bit of what was making people ill, and in many cases killing them because they didn't have, you know, ways to stop it, and creating 
you know, giving everybody in the family a little bit of the pox and before they got smallpox, so they didn't get pox. So essentially, homeopathy is older than allopathic medicine. Is that right? Yeah, I, I hate to ever say something I'm, I'm not an expert at, but yes, it was the foundations of, okay. of medicine. Primarily, it's believed most people give credit to Dr. Hahnemann out of Germany as really the founder of homeopathy. He definitely was instrumental for sure. And so because of this uh, first head of the FDA being a homeopathic physician, that's why homeopathy is considered an over-the-counter medicine. Is that right? That's why it became regulated. Okay. It's actually what the F- FDA regulation has created that that then cause it, calls it an OTC. It's actually got its own little special place in the FDA where it is regulated and it is considered an OTC and you do have to follow, you know, labeling and production and, and you know, all the, the manufacturing process. But some things aren't required that might be required of a chemical-based OTC because there is those 200 years of it not hurting anyone. So the safety (laughs) is already kind of built in. So we aren't held to that kind of proving that maybe a new pharmaceutical over-the-counter would be required to do. So there is, you know, it's kind of this special little place for homeopathy in there. But as a result, you know, we had a big situation last year being a regulated product, we used a lab that had an issue with a non-sprayology product. They had a, a negative test result, which is not a good thing. And they did the right thing. They went and, you know, reported this to the FDA. The products that failed were not preserved, but it did show that they had some sort of breach in their water filtration system. So the water has to be, you know, goes through a very extensive filtration system to make sure that nothing bad gets in there. You, it's then created with your ingredients and your formulation and your preservative method. My understanding is that the products that did not pass test were preserved with a citric acid. We actually use a stronger preservative of an alcohol and glycerin combination. It's still not a lot of alcohol, but It's enough that even if a microbial got in, the job of the alcohol is to kill it. But that being said, the the FDA did come in and made the suggestion for a voluntary recall for anything that was produced in the lab in the last three years in liquid form. And that represented everything we had in the market except our vitamins. That was not a good day when we heard we should be part of that voluntary recall. We did what we were supposed to do. We immediately went out. We tested our products with the third-party lab to make sure they were safe. And then we connected with our FDA you know, recall coordinator and other higher-ups in the FDA and had a conversation with them. We wanted to show them that our products were safe. And they really... We had a conversation and and they really, you know, compelled us to decide to agree to doing the recall, doing above and beyond what was expected and to pull our products out of the market. So even Um, though they were safe. Yeah. I still use the recall product. My family still uses the recall product. I had no worries about the safeness of the product, you know, but it was a good thing and a very hard thing. You know, in many ways, it gave us some time to sit back and make sure to do a better job investigating our labs. We added a new lab. The lab was put to task to on their failures to properly protect the water filtration system. They now have, you know, a top-rated, top-inspected, regularly inspected multiple times a day water filtration system. And frankly, if we want to be part of the U.S. market and compete with the big boys and get more people comfortable with natural medicine, they have to have that trust. So although it was hard, you know what? I'm glad we did it. How many products did you have to recall? Or like We had at the time, 20, oh, well, and... 22 formulas, but over production of three years. So, oh you know, this was everything we had in the market. Any business we had done in the last three years. <laughs> it was extensive. It's just like you know, everything pulled, period, yeah. all of it. Amazon contacted anyone who purchased it through Amazon and our selling was shut down there. We directly reached out to all of our direct consumers. And then we had to retail, reach out to all of our spa partners and 
or anyone who sold us at retail and pull it back from them. It was a lower level recall because none of our products tested positive. So the retailer who sold product was not required to then call up their customer and tell them to bring it in. But if a customer did bring in the product to the spa, they would just re we would return it to us. It was huge. It was such an undertaking. It was very stressful, you know. I mean, and it's basically like your entire life and what's supporting you and your family, like absolutely. suddenly pulls the rug out from underneath you, like everything, yeah. like all of it, right? Except yes. for your vitamins, but right. But at the time, I only had formulas. one vitamin in the market. I only had one vitamin in the market at the time. Now we have three, which we did. You know, we worked on them while we were out. But okay, so yeah. tell me about tell me about what was going on in your head when when this happened. Were you just like I was at first very fearful. You know, I had spray has encountered so many things over twenty years, right? I mean, you know, my sister was my business partner and she died. You know, ups and downs in the market. You know, the two thousand eight two thousand nine financial crisis. I mean, we had weathered a lot of storms and we always came through. And I, although we're challenged by those, I was never really afraid. This was scary. You know, this was uncharted waters. Could we successfully um, comply and really do what the FDA wanted us to do and do it efficiently and effectively? Could we communicate it to our customer that, you know, we were going above and beyond and doing the right thing and that they're, you know, we're here for them? Could we, when we went back in the market, would the customer come back? Not to mention just the whole financial side of it, right? Huge. It's a huge loss. Huge. It was so, so hard. Oh my God. So did you, okay, so you pulled everything back and then you had to find a new lab and then make sure the water filtration was all good or highly regulated and then have the, like the, the income or the money to create 22 more formulas from scratch. And I imagine you had to get rid of labels and boxes and stuff too. Well, at the same time, in addition, it was there was even a bigger additional step. So say we pulled everything back and it all goes back to the original manufacturer, you know, so that there's they can credit us basically for that. But at the same time, because of what we went through with the FDA, we decided to make a few changes to our, our packaging to make the preservative method even more undeniably accurate, you know. So that meant what, as soon as we changed anything in the products, all the packaging we had, you know, because we keep packaging, we always have, you know, all our boxes, all our labels, everything was destroyed. And we had to start from fresh. You know how it's expensive packaging new. is. Oh. oh my God. Yeah, it was a challenge. But you know what? Darn it. Uh, we started pulling product out of the market in October of 2018. And it took us till April of 2019 to start getting product back into the market. And I would say the first time we had all products available at the same time in the market was July of 2019. Holy crap, almost, yeah, like almost a year. a year. I mean, it definitely was close. And, but we, I gotta say, we love our customers. I mean, people would call us up and say, thank you for doing the right thing, or, oh, I've missed. I've missed my sleepy so much or, you know, how much better I feel that you're back. You know, we really, we heard from a lot of customers. We had people calling us every day, asking us for sleepies. Wow. And I'm like, I'm sorry, it's not back yet. And of course that was one of the ones that took the longest to get back in market. So that was frustrating for, you know, when you're going through these changes and, and redoing packaging, you know, there's just sometimes holdups that or beyond your control. It took a lot of patience. I must say, I really had to wake up every day and make a choice to have a good attitude and to keep pushing that boulder uphill. Some days were really hard because you'd be in the office and, you know, normally UPS comes and picks up product we're shipping out, but like, you know, FedEx, UPS, you, you know, the United Postal, they were all coming and just giving us all this product back. And it was really painful <laughs> to like see this product come back and and you um, know it's good, you know it's been yeah. tested, you know it's oh clean. yeah, and I knew I was just... taking it. <laughs> <laughs> but it, that would really could could dampen your spirits on a daily basis. Let's put it that way. And so, did the did your manufacturer reimburse you for some of it at least? You know, we have credit for product 
and of which we've made some choices on and kind of looked, but we have all of our product also being made at a new lab that we love and we really, and I got to say the lab that did have the issue has put an extensive amount of money into becoming a top lab. And, you know, I hope they succeed in fully coming back because, you know, they had a a very big undertaking because it was, you know, the majority of their business was liquid as well. They do some topical products. So I don't think that the United States needs less homeopathic manufacturers. I think they need more. And I don't know the exact stack, but I heard like four or more labs, you know, didn't make it last year because of similar types of situations. But the good news is I do think they should be held to a standard. You know, products are going in your mouth. We want them to be the best and we want them to be natural. We want the ingredients. We want them to work. We want them to be safe. There's, you know, I know mine were, but I think that they should be held to a level if they're going to be producing products that go in people's mouth. Kick ass. Yeah. Your your determination. (laughs) I mean, it's like being in business is not easy. And this is like probably one of the hardest things I could imagine because businesses could fold for things like that, right? Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, I definitely had a few days, more than a few days that that was up for consideration. How were we going to survive this? What were we going to do? I'm really proud that we did. And I'm proud of the people who helped us and you know, the patience of our retailers. We had some really good partners who were just like, Ellie, how can we help you? What can we do? Wow. You know, and even some people are offering just to, you know, pay in advance for some product to give us cash flow. So, so great. Yeah. We really had some lovely people. You really, you definitely do see who your real partners are in a situation like this. So it was, I'm stronger. <laughs> the things, you know, you know it yourself. As a small, as a business owner, you have to figure out how to make a lot of things work and you fix things w- that are not in your wheelhouse for talent, right? So it could be a computer system. It could be social media some people aren't comfortable with or, you know, organization of inventory and, you know, all of these different things. There's operational, there's financial, there's MIS, there's all these things. I never expected it to, to include, you know, really having a clear procedure to initiate and successfully complete a recall. But we did Badass. it. Badass. We did it. We did it. Yeah. Okay. So for, I mean, we're close to the holidays, it's kind of a gifting time. I love And I'm in such alignment with your value system around preventative. What would be some good gifts that people could look into for their family members? That's a great question. You know, we have a hangover prevention product. So that's kind of like the fun one, right? You know, we we all eat and drink a little more. Not all of us. Many do in the holidays. So preventing hangovers. We also have a lot of brides who will have it on their table at their weddings or you know, at the bar. So party relief is one. But I I think it's really thinking about the person you care about in giving the gift of health. And so, you know, we see a lot of stress out there. So stress relief is a great stocking stuffer or gift. I think the everyday sunshine, because it is winter, and really, everybody needs this, you know, I mean, my daughter is a freshman in college. And she has her whole little lineup of products. And she's like, all our friends walk in and they they do all their spray <laughs> down the line. But, and she's like, people are getting sick. And you know what, mom, I'm not. <laughs> taking, taking care and health. So it is looking at, at people and we're always here to help. I mean, our website definitely talks about each product, but we're always our customer service. You know, we're happy to talk to people and, and help them find the right product. If somebody feels like they're coming down with a cold, what's the procedure? So there's actually three products that I consider really important for the immune system and taking care of yourself. So if someone is getting sick frequently, they should really be on the immunobooster and the vitamin D3, the everyday sunshine. But at the moment that you think you're starting to experience symptoms, the key product is our cold plus, it's called cold and flu relief. And I have consistently seen this product stop a cold. So the first day I think I'm getting sick, I will carry it around with me, maybe spray it every half hour. And you know what? I'm not sick the next day. So that's the one to stop the cold. But 
I do look at if you're getting sick a lot, what's underlying that? What's beneath? So that's when we want to look at supporting the immune system. I was a severe asthmatic. I was always on an inhaler. I was on pills for asthma well into my late 30s. And it has been over 15 years since I've used an inhaler. And yeah, we have three products I really suggest for that. Again, it's the Immuno Booster as a regular one. But we have one that's actually for lung health, and it, it makes you kind of feel like it opens up your lungs, and that's called Life Detoxer. And then if your asthma is allergy-related, we include the allergies. Okay, so for somebody who had pneumonia, pretty severe case of pneumonia last year, yep. it would be good to get them on a regular protocol of Life Detoxer yes. to prevent that? And the immuno booster because they got to build up their immune system. Again, I always think the vitamin D3 for the immune as well. Immune what about system. for somebody? So like I've been, you know, traveling back and forth to Asia, Costa Rica. Mm -hmm. I always feel like so wonderful traveling until I get on the plane. Something about like the radiation yeah. of the planes and the ride yeah. and lack of water and stuff. Would yeah. that be the life detoxer? Actually, it's a great one to add into it. I think it's one of those products. It's not a top seller for us, but it probably should be because I, I think that people aren't fully there thinking of prevention yet. So the, the Life Detoxer has ingredients for the lungs, the liver, and the kidneys, and they're all very important for the body. But I think that ours is a, a very gentle, simple daily detox and pushes environmental and food and other toxins out of the body. But it really kind of goes under you know, the radar. I think people are still kind of like, I don't feel good now. Let me take the one that helps me feel better versus what's underneath it. To answer your question, traveling, I always use our jet lag formula. It doesn't just, it works on the whole what's going on with the body, dehydration, disorientation, you know, sleeplessness, wakefulness. It's a really great product for that. And I always, other products I always travel with, the Immunobooster, the Life Detoxer, and the digestive ease. Because when I'm in other countries and I've been traveling, sometimes my stomach gets a little wacky trying new foods or just being out of my normal daily, what my body does every day. Oh, so. I find that to be one of the like hottest topics in the last year or so. I noticed within the flower essence world, mm -hmm. one of the most commonly and growing remedies is one that we have called self heal to to boost the body's natural ability to heal. And, and it can be helpful for people with a lot of stomach issues and digestive stuff. And I just see that growing, right? Do you see that? Like just so many food allergies so, and this makes yeah. me bloat and now I have to be gluten-free and dairy-free and try to figure out what my body's sensitive to. So something like your digestive ease would help for folks who are experiencing bloating and food sensitivity. Yeah, it it's for indigestion gas, nausea, food poisoning, stomach distension, really any stomach discomfort. We have people who even have like really serious Crohn's and other different things where, you know, it's not, you know, going to stop that, but it's going to help support them and, and ease some of the, the intensity of, of their symptoms. But I too, I mean, I think you and I could talk an hour on just that. Like, you know, when we looked back 20 years ago, we didn't see the sleep issues and we didn't use the word stress and anxiety. And now it's like that's going into the stomach. I mean, we've had, you know, there's been a lot in the media over the years and probiotics and prebiotics and all this. And it's, it, it's really confusing, I think, to a lot of people. I think they know they need to feed their gut healthy things, but really what's at the whole root of this? And I do think it goes back to stress. So it's like, to me, it's stress becomes physical, starts to show an outward sign in the body or in the skin or in your energy. It's really, you know, something to pay attention to. I totally agree. I totally agree. Because you I can have... That by that self-heal formula. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you can have certain issues. And then when you get out of your regular routine, like I was just leading a retreat in Costa Rica. And although I was working and responsible for 26 people, it was like a break from the routine. And so yeah. it like feels like a little vacation to me. It's um, inspiring. And I, see, and I see the differences in my physical body from, you know, from just resting in a constant state of deep relaxation versus this normal stress of every day. You really yeah. see the benefits of being more relaxed. 
Yeah. You're so good at that too. I mean, you inspire me. You know, anytime I've spent time with you, I'm like, oh yeah, I have to remember to breathe because we all have our things we're good at, you know? And for me, you know, I'm good at like action and getting it done. Luckily, I have all these great sprays to keep me healthy, but I do every year you get older, you think about, you know, choice in where and how I want to feel and be 10 years from now. You know, I just spent, I visited both my father-in-law and my father and his wife and her 92-year-old sister over this last weekend. And so I was with from 82 to 92. So, and there was an 86 and an 87 in there. Makes and, you feel so young, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you, you really definitely look at them and you can say, hmm, I'd like to do a little better here. Or gosh, they're really doing great here. You know, and frankly, out of the group, I would say the 92-year-old was the healthiest. Wow. And when the three go out together, she's the one who drives. Wow. Yeah. What is she By doing differently? Her name is also Ellie. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and she's tall like me. I was like, oh, you inspire me. But, you know, I think a lot of it is outlook and care and, you know, moving your body and not taking a lot of, you know, medicines. I don't want to bad mouth medicine because, you know, there's the U.S. is the best in emergency care and helping people in the world. What I have a problem is, is when people don't try to look at what's at the root cause in the beginning and add a medicine and then that medicine causes something else and they add another medicine and they don't know how that one's affecting the body. And, you know, and then they get, you know, to an age where they're confusing their medicines and then that can cause them a serious concern. So I looked at this group and I thought, you know, what, what am I seeing that's really good here? You know, my dad and I looked at his vitamins he was taking and I was really, he's sharp as a tack, but his body's starting to fail him. So we, we talked about different things to do. So I think um, I look at this younger generation right now and, and the stress and um, the issues with their bodies functioning correctly. So at 55, I said, I decided I wanted to lose a little weight this year. You know, I'll be 55 next month. I was really thrilled that at my age, with just a little effort, I mean, I still drank wine, um, but I ate more green foods. I looked at really how much food I was eating. And the fact that my body said, okay, I agree. And I lost that weight quickly. A lot of women my age, that's not the case. Their body is just like, holding on to it and not letting it go. I think that I also used our diet power product, but <laughs> you know, I think it told me that my body was working with me and functioning well. Just like if I get a sore throat and I use my formulas and the next day I don't have a sore throat, my body did what it was supposed to do. You know, versus you carrying on with that sore throat and for 6 days and 7 days and it turning into a cold you know, my body's functioning well, but I try to listen to it. But I'm worried about the younger generation. <laughs> well, and then I, yeah, I mean, what, when you say younger generation, what I think of is cell phone radiation. And as yeah. we move into this sort of 5G world, yeah. I mean, I, I notice with a new iPhone, the difference when I hold it for longer periods of time in my joints, my joints start to hurt. And that that's an immediate correlation. And so I think about the younger kids. Mm -hmm growing up on a, on a large diet of smartphone, right? In yeah, their bodies. It's so, true. it's so true. I think there's a lot of studies also out of Europe. They haven't really been acknowledged in the U S but with radiation and brain tumors and, you know, this generation's holding them down here, which are, you know, we had it up here. I think there's, there is a lot of concern. Yeah. I like how you say a large diet of because I'm, I often, you know, I'll talk to my kids. I don't keep it on my body. You know, I don't, I try not to hold it a lot. It's over there. I, you know, and I tell my kids that like my sons, don't keep it in your pocket all the time. When you're at home and you're at home, stick it on the table. Don't be touching it all the time. Keep good it advice. <laughs> um, and so what are like, almost done. I have two, like about two more questions for you. What are some of the stories that have been the most inspirational to you about your community folks working with homeopathy and finding whether it's results or a new lifestyle or a new outlook, what's been the most inspiring to you? 
You know, when I when we get the one the customers who call us and thank us and tell us, I we have so many testimonials. But I was at the Ritz Carlton in Naples doing a training actually a week ago, and one of the therapists shared that he has been off his inhaler for ten years now, thanks to my products, because he heard me speak about twelve years ago, and he did what I said and. You know, and he was like, I can't tell you how that changed my life. I used to always have it in my pocket. I was always nervous if I didn't have it. And now I don't even have to think about it. That's very free. So that feels great. We have a, another client, a woman older than me who comes to mind. She takes a lot of products, kind of like me, you know, probably takes more than 10 products a day kind of thing. Um, and she calls us up at the end of every year and asks us how much she spent. And she always goes, wow, that's so much more than all my prescriptions and my medical used to cost me. And so that's really impactful. But there was one story of a, a little girl who kept saying, mommy, mommy, I want my spray. She, the little girl was an asthmatic and her mom was like, which one? And she's like, the one that opens up and she showed with her hands, like she could explain how it made her feel. Wow. And so, when, you know, kind of a child to, you know, really notice that is insightful. So, but, you know, I just, I love hearing that people are off, you know, strong sleeping aids. They're off daily allergy medicine when it just became a habit. I also think people are becoming more aware of the cost versus, you know, there's always a little, you know, something to pay in some some situations. But, you know, the FDA has changed the warnings on, you know, acetaminophen, on PPIs. They've all changed in the last year and they've become more serious. And so, you know, those people who would just take a PPI every single day, even if they didn't really need it, I'm hopeful that we can get more people to think, hmm, is there another option? Is there something else I could do? Instead of like the fix when it's broken mentality, going into like, how can I nourish and support my body every day, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's a great way to put it. So what would be some words of wisdom that you have that you commonly share with people or that you often find yourself telling your kids or friends or just something that kind of springs to your mind right now? You know, listen to your body. Our body's really smart. It tells us a lot. And it also can really heal, you know, if you give it a little bit of love. I do that through homeopathy and, and you do it through flower essence and, you know, finding the way, but give your body a chance and, and listen to it. You know, my mom, she used to say, you know, hey, I was a, a busy kind of kid always. I was involved in school and involved in sports. And, and she would say, you look tired today. Why don't you go put up your feet and have a glass of water? Like sometimes we just need to really put up our feet and have a glass of water. <laughs> and a few sprays <laughs> of flowers around us, some homeopathy inside of us. I think people have to be a little more aware of how they feel and get in tune with what is causing it, whether it's stress or, you know, being on their phone too much and technology and, you know, lack of exercise, food you're putting in your body. There's all different things, but if you can pay attention, you can figure it out. Mm -hmm. And I love that you make homeopathic remedies that work so well with our flower essences and that kind of target different areas than we do, you know, like hair and nail growth and cold and flu and allergies and digestion, digestion and things that from the flower essence perspective, we would have to kind of come at it from an angle, which is like, well, like maybe you're worrying, which is creating digestive issues. But I love that your remedies kind of like get into the meat of the physical body a little bit more. And I mean, we've seen folks like at the Pearl who have their little, you know, their little bags or like purses full of spray allergy <laughs> and lotus bay. <laughs> I love that they work so well together. I mean, it's a subtle, subtle remedy. I would think that if you are used to working with homeopathy, your body would respond really well with flower essences and vice mm -hmm. versa because it's so used to that kind of subtle communication and subtle messaging. Yeah, I like how you said communication because that's what it is. Those modalities go really well together, you know, and it's it's choosing the different, working with different parts of the body and symptoms and you know, we definitely have certain products that are very symptom relief focused. Like 
I don't feel good now and I need help now. And yours, you know, fixing the deeper problem so that problem doesn't keep happening. You know, we also have products that work like the immuno booster is trying to focus on a bigger part of the puzzle to improve daily health. But yeah, they're, they're so good together and they're, you know, the naturalness and the ingredient choice of both of them just are meant to be together. And I love that just like with the holidays coming up, it just seems yeah. like a great gift. I love that. Um, you know, you can support your family members and your friends with, with something like good health. And yeah, I'm so happy to reconnect with you and I need to go and order. I need to run and order a few things right now. Well, no, you email me. You email me. I'll take care of you. But I hope our paths physically connect very soon and maybe we're in the same place or and can have a cup of tea together and spend some time and you can remind me to breathe and I can make sure you're getting enough rest. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you for being so vulnerable and sharing like the business story that happened to you in the last few years and I really am commend you because you're such a badass businesswoman and (laughs) admire you so much well one badass to another i love (laughs) you take care bye thank you so much for listening to the flower lounge i'm katie hess and we'll be releasing a new podcast every wednesday if you like what you heard or you know someone who might be touched by our conversation share it with them and don't forget to subscribe To find out what your favorite flowers mean about you, take the quiz at lotusway.com.